Incorrectly pronouncing the R sound is one of the most persistent speech problems for children. But now an unlikely tool, an ultrasound probe, is showing promise in helping them. Here with more are WSJ health reporter Sumathi Reddy and Tara McAllister Bayan, assistant professor at NYU's Department of Communicative Sciences and Disorders. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us. Sumathi, let me start with you. How big of a speech problem is this incorrect pronunciation of the R? Which words does it manifest itself in? Um, so you see it in all different sounds, but it's like, you know, when you hear a kid say wed instead of red, you know, that's a very common one. Um, but it's about 10% of kids have some sort of speech or sound disorder. R is one of the most common one. About 2 to 3% of people in general population will have an R problem that persists. And Tara, you've worked with and studied these children. Where does this problem come from? Does it tend to be genetic? Is it auditory? We don't have a really good sense exactly of what causes speech sound problems. We know that there's a developmental period where children are learning speech sounds and most children will converge on normal pronunciation within that period, but for a subset of kids there's still a persisting error. And for those kids it may be that they don't really hear the distinction between the R sound and the error that they're making. Right. And, and Sabathi, at what point is it crucial to get help? I, I understand that parents have talked to you about um, when the child is about eight years old, they get worried, right? Yeah, that's a little controversial in the speech therapy community. I mean, some people think you should wait till eight when sometimes these problems will resolve on their own. Other people think, you know, doing it earlier is better. So it kind of really depends on the parent and the child. And, right. And Tara, what's your opinion on that, when to get treatment? It absolutely depends on the family because all of these children will tell me roughly the same thing. People think I talk differently or people ask me where I'm from. They say I talk with an accent. And for some kids, that's a distinctive thing that they like. But for other kids, they may be reluctant to speak in social or academic settings. And so if it's posing a problem, that's when we try to provide the intervention. And tell us about this ultrasound probe that you've been working with. How does it work exactly? So ultrasound is ultrasound. Uh, it sends out an ultrasound wave that will reflect uh, when it encounters a change in density between different surfaces. And if we place a probe underneath the chin, then we can actually get a reflection that will show us the shape and movements of the tongue. So it's the visual, Sumathi, that the kids are getting that's explaining how the tongue is supposed to look when these sounds are made. Exactly. The curve of the line, you'll see the shape, and right. that'll help them to sort of figure out it. Is there some experimentation involved, like just letting them make different shapes with their tongues and seeing what kinds of sounds come out? Absolutely. There's, there's a, an experimentation piece, and there's also a modeling piece, because the really difficult thing about a sound like ours is that it's hidden inside your mouth while you're talking. And so you can't show the child, look at what I'm doing, and so if we show them, this is what my tongue looks like when I say R, can you make your tongue look the look same like as that. mine? Yeah. And Sumathi, have parents that you've spoken to and other researchers say that this shows a lot of promise? Yeah, yeah, it. definitely. I mean, it's, right now it's primarily being used in research, mm -hmm. um, but there are a few places that are doing it clinically. University of Cincinnati has done it some, and University of British Columbia. That's exciting. And you are also conducting some research right here in the New York City area, correct? Can you tell us about that? That's correct, yeah. The ultrasound research that I've done in the past was with colleagues at uh, Montclair State University in New Jersey. Uh, but right now I'm conducting some computer-based treatment for children who have an R error that hasn't responded to conventional forms of treatment. And so if there are uh, children in the New York City area who could use a free treatment program that uses some of these technologies, then we're actively looking for subjects. That's great to know. Tara and Samathi, thanks so much to both of you for being with us.